What up, peeps? It's your boy, Heck Steve. Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today we're about to talk about Chase After the Right Price again. I know it's exhausting to even look at them because it's just like it takes a lot of effort to analyze what you're seeing uh, and how ridiculous it is. But today I want to talk about his recent visit to the Midwest Gaming Co Convention. And uh, he did four videos on this. Now, I went ahead and I watched all four of them. Because uh, I hate myself. I watched all four of these videos and I basically screenshotted every pickup that he got. Because I want you guys to really realize what kind of damage this dude does at a convention when he goes. Because essentially, I think it was like six months ago or something. He had 100,000 subscribers. Now he's got 172,000. So his ad revenue has got to be through the roof. His budget, you know, with his business and his ad revenue coming in, he can literally kill a convention so yeah i tried to go through screenshot every sale that he uh he made and uh you know keep in mind he did pay sticker price on 99 percent of the stuff that i'm gonna show you this is the first one there's 31 pictures we're gonna kind of go through them fairly quick but this is just one man one man and his caretaker uh sky guy and uh basically you know he's going through and you know he says in the video too he's like I only want the games that are in really great condition, CIB, uh, things that sell really quick for him on Amazon or on whatnot. So he's going through and basically taking all the best stuff that he can find that he can make a profit on out of this convention. And as I mentioned several times before, all the people that have to pay all of the expenses to come to these conventions you know, he's basically, he's stealing, you know, opportunities from them. Yeah, this first stack, nothing really significant here, but, you know, very profitable for him. The Grim Adventures of Bill and Mandy. Uh, I think, I think it's Bill and Mandy. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've watched Cartoon Network. Um, but yeah, let me go over here. We got this long stack of PS2 games. Silent Hill 3 in there, of course. That's a desirable one. I believe a lot of collectors want the Playboy game, even though it's trash. We got Twisted Metal um you know there's some good stuff in there man so and then i think he bought like several copies of psychonaut so you may see that one show up in other pictures we got rampage world tour twisted metal 3 ninja and like i said he's not paying sticker on any of these games uh which which blows my mind like that vendors especially on the gamecube games they're just willing to cut him a deal i, I don't know if maybe they feel intimidated by having the camera on them uh or or what but i mean you know the first day of the convention He's sitting here trying to buy all of your best stuff and get it discounted. Why would you want to do that? Like, you know you're going to sell big box Mario Party 7 for 160 bucks. Somebody will buy that. I know you can't really see it on the screen, but yeah, there you go. 160 bucks. Uh, and then this was kind of the bat the bottom of a stack here. Digimon World 4, Most Wanted. And we got, uh, looks like Twilight Princess for the GameCube. Rock Band 3, Up Your Arsenal, Ratchet and Clank, more Wii U titles, all the bangers, like all the good ones that you would want, most part, uh, for the most part. We got New Super Mario Bros. Wii for the Wii, obviously Super Mario Sunshine, and Double Dash. There's a few copies of Double Dash that he bought. I, I just didn't want to like cover the whole video because, oh, excuse me, I just had lunch, so I got some indigestion here. But I didn't want to cover all four videos in a video. I kind of talked about the conventions a little bit in the last video I did on him. But like I said, man, this is just Chase After the Right Prices hauls. So think about the fact that Phoenix Resale was probably there. Actually, he was. He's in the video. You can see that he's at the convention, uh, which would lead me to believe that, you know, Midwest or fuck. I can't even fucking think right now. Retro Rick had to have been there. Probably some other chodes that, you know, that buy all the stuff. They snipe the conventions and then they f turn around and flip it online, either Amazon or whatnot uh, for a massive profit. There's more copies of Psychonauts for you. Shadow Hearts for the PS2. We've got Downpour for the PS3. Now, this is part of the stack. So there's multiple pictures for this. But I mean, just look, he got four CIB controllers. I uh, paid, it, uh, I think, $40 a piece for them which would be 160 so i don't know maybe he paid 45 a piece for them that would make sense here's more from that stack I, I i think i have a picture as well yeah there you go so there's like the whole shebang right there this stuff didn't even make it to the floor as far as i know so you got to think this is real early in the convention they definitely had the vip ticket uh so this stuff didn't even get to have an opportunity to be seen by anyone but him which uh you know he he loves to take advantage of stuff like that because to him it's not about 
games, uh, you know, getting to the right people. It's about getting to the right people as long as it goes through him for a massive upcharge. Even had the audacity to say in one of his videos that he was excited. He was he said it exactly like this. He's like, and you know, I'm just so excited to uh, disperse these games to collectors all around the world where they can be displayed and enjoyed. Like, yeah, as long as they fucking pay you 60 to a hundred dollars more than it should be. Uh, and it, it's just shameful, man. Like how, how can you do business to the point where, you know, like you say you're helping other vendors out, but you're literally, you're coming in early to a convention and buying all of their best stuff that they would definitely sell probably for sticker price. So you're taking profits away from the vendors that actually have to pay all these expenses to come to the convention too, and pay for the table, you know, cause you know, running a table cost money uh it, it's just ridiculous man and I, I seriously don't know why they 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 work with them so well and give them such a great discounts i guess they think the publicity is worth it and then he then he had this side transaction from another dude at the convention he paid for this huge box of stuff it had a lot of good shit in it i mean there you go 25th right there there's a switch light looks like a switch light and uh that was a 3ds xl in the box i believe you know and a bunch of other stuff i think he paid like I don't know, six, sixteen hundred dollars for the shit that's in this box. So there was some rare stuff in there. Don't quote me on that though. I could be wrong. Uh, you know, then you got a nice little NES bundle here, you know, with five games, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we picked up the Pokemon black Nintendo DSI. And uh, I can't remember exactly what the sticker was. It looks like one thirty. but you know, obviously he didn't pay that. He probably paid like 90 for it or or a hundred. Super Smash Bros. Melee, you know, you gotta have that. And that's another thing too, is like, the premise for a lot of his videos was, I'm gonna buy all of the childhood GameCube games. Then he had another video where he's like, I'm looking for only Pokemon stuff. Now that might not have been part of this convention, but I've seen that one in the past. Then he has another video from this convention where he's like, I'm trying to buy every single Mario game. Why do you do that? <laughs> Cause you know, like, all that does is it takes the opportunity from people that should get these games. If your fucking whack, gay, stupid, nerd, goober ass wasn't there, um, you know, they could actually have an opportunity to buy some shit and make the trip to the convention worthwhile. Because basically, like, the more resellers come in and really fuck over the regular customers at these conventions, less people are going to start coming to these conventions. Like, seriously, it could get to the point where it's only resellers walking around buying from other resellers, you know, cause they've just, everybody else is just too discouraged. They're like, it's not worth it to go look through a convention that's been cherry picked over. And, and I totally agree with that. It's not worth it at all. Typically going to a convention is never worth it. But if you're looking for like super rare, obscure stuff, it used to be a good place to go. And don't get me wrong. There's like thousands and thousands of games at this convention. I know he didn't buy every single thing, but you just have to think about as a whole, like the massive amount of damage that he does on his own compared to like everybody else that that's making videos doing the same exact thing. <sighs> Man, it's just crazy, dude. And it's just so much stuff getting sucked out and put into the Amazon world. And that's another thing we got to stop. Like if you buy retro games on Amazon, you have to stop, dude, because like, I, I mean, I don't really think anybody that watches this channel does. Maybe if you stumble across this video and you've bought a retro game on Amazon before. Fuck you, you fucking dumbass. Stop doing that, all right? Why? Because you're spending way too much more on the game than you should. All right, let me turn this one around here. So, okay, we've got... There's some more double dashes for you. Wind Waker. We got the Collector's Edition of something. I can't see because of the reflection. Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition. Okay, that's what I thought it said, but I wasn't sure. Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. GameCube. You know, just... He got this whole stack of GameCube games here. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is from the uh, the vendor that was like, man, these games sell really fast for us. So, like, we don't need to, you know, cut any deals. But they ended up doing it anyways. And, you know, like I said, he didn't pay a sticker. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think they gave him 30% off. Like, he paid 70% of price charting. So, when you think about that, like, the vendor, they may not necessarily know that he's going to sell them on Amazon. You know, for, like, 150%, 200% more than what price charting says so when he comes in and he's like hey can you give me 30 percent off of price charting they might be thinking in their mind 
that he wants to just make 30% profit off of this. And that's, he wants me to give him 30% off that way. I, as the vendor selling to him, make some profit and then he'll make 30% profit on top of that. But no, that's not the case. And I don't know if vendors know that or not, but you know, like if, if he buys, you know, let's say if he buys Metroid prime gets 30% off $45. So like, what is that? Like, I don't know. He pays like 31, $32 for it. Maybe I didn't, I didn't math that at all. I'm just guessing based on, you know, past math experiences, <laughs> but yeah, so he gets it for 32 and sells it for $90 on Amazon or 70, you know, there's, there's a huge margin there for him. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if vendors know that they do that or not, but it's pretty, pretty shitty and they should, they should fucking find out. Now, these are the same double dashes from the previous picture, but he did add Resident Evil 2 for the GameCube on there, so I wanted to include that. Bought a CIB Toys R Us edition in 64. You know, that's just, you know, that's nothing that anybody would want, you know? I'm just kidding. Of course that's something that somebody would want. That would be like the highlight of a convention visit for somebody that he just fucking took away. I don't know if he's reselling that, though. He might actually keep that. Just for the record. Still a, still a bitch, though. Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness... Fire Emblem Path Radiant. So these are some of the big hitters for the GameCube. Uh, you know, he was able to secure these. I believe they wanted $275 for this one and $250 for this one. And I think he ended up paying $225 for that one and $210 for that one. Something like that. I mean, there's just so many numbers flying around in his videos. And I just watched four of those videos, like, kind of back to back. Uh, so I could be wrong, but I, it was a significant discount. Like, the, the vendor lost out on, like, $70 or $80 profit. Um, but I mean, obviously they wouldn't have made the sale if they didn't make a little bit of profit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just don't understand why people do this for this fucking asshole. And you got the startup disc, of course, seen a couple of those in, uh, past videos for him. He makes a huge deal out of this thing. It's, it's, it's stupid, man. Like just fucking get a Retron five. You can literally buy a Retron five for like the same amount of money. Almost. I think it's like 169 for a Retron five. And it plays Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Famicom, Super Famicom, Sega Genesis. Uh, I think that might be everything that it does. But I mean, like, just, just fucking do that, man. And then you don't have to buy it from this cock. You can just buy a Retron 5 from a fucking regular retailer. You don't have to do all this whack shit or have a GameCube, have a retro gaming TV. Nah, nah, B. Just fucking do the Retron. And, like, you, you don't even have to fix the batteries in your Game Boy games on the Retron. Because it, it fucking saves it on there. Couple loose games. I remember he said he paid 50 bucks for this. So, 25, 25, and then 15. So, basically, he got one for free. Buy two, get one free. Uh, I'm chasing after the right price. Special. I'm privileged. Uh, fuck you. That's why I get good discounts on stuff. Because I'm chasing after the right price. Okay. Whatever. That's, that's essentially the shitty mean version of what he said in his video oh then we have this this isn't even everything but he ended up buying this dude's entire booth like he had a bunch of cib n64 games uh and he had a lot of loose carts as well for like nes and shit uh but yeah he bought the whole booth i think he paid 3300 dollars for all of that so i mean you know he's just out there fucking dicks out man just fucking slanging that dick slinging that fucking dick and the people that watch his channel they're the ones that are fucking paying for all this shit and I, I, I seriously don't know why. How could you support somebody that's like this? Like, he just walks into a convention, drops like 10K over the weekend, you know, takes like all of the best shit that he could find out of here. Why would you want to support somebody like that, man? And the only thing that I can come up with is the reason that you would want to support him is because you're a scumbag reseller too, where you don't actually give a fuck about other gamers or like gaming in general, you just primarily care about making money. So like you watch him as homework, you don't even really fucking like him, but you leave all these little kiss ass comments on his fucking videos. Just, I love you, Chase. You've shown me the way, you've shown me the way. Did he showed you the way to capitalism? Did you not go to fucking school and, and go through economics? What the fuck is wrong with you dumb ass motherfuckers, man? Like Chase is nobody. He's nobody. He's literally nobody. And that's what's funny about it, too. I make a video on him, and everybody's like, oh, you're just using his success to kind of, like, feed off of him so you can, like, you can be successful, too. Dude, I don't give a fuck about none of this. All right? I, I have a life outside of YouTube. Because for me, I'm good. I don't need cheap games. I can afford anything I want. And I hate to point that out. You know, I hate to be that guy where I'm like, man, I can buy anything I want. You know, like, I don't like to be that guy. But 
that's true, man. So like, you can't, you can't tell me that like, I'm jealous of what he's doing. I, I'm not, dude. I, I'm not, dude. I mean, look, see all this fucking shit back here. I got all these games. I love all of them. I ain't played half of them. Maybe, maybe I played half, you know, through my entire life at some point, but like, I haven't like actually, like I haven't played this specific copy of street fighter two super street fighter two. So I got enough shit that like, I, I don't even get to fucking play. So you can just stop calling me jealous. But I mean, I guess that's like the first, that's like the first thing that you can use as your defense. You're like, well, the only reason this guy has to be upset with chase is because he's jealous of him. Look at that, dude. I would rather be a fat bearded neck dude, neck, <laughs> neck dude, a fat bearded, fat neck bearded dude. Then walk around looking like fucking 50 year old guy while also looking 10 years old with a hint of Pee Wee Herman being the douchiest douche ever. Got to have a whole team with you to fucking help you commit your schemes because you're buying at such a fucking mass level Mon trying to monopolize this whole goddamn thing on, on fucking Amazon. Like it's, it's crazy. And then you want to talk about supporting local businesses and local vendors and shit like that. How are you doing that when all you're doing is you're feeding it to the fucking place that killed most of these retailers in the first place? Just because you get a, a, a better fucking profit off of it, man. And don't even get me started about his fucking whatnot shit. Because, man, like, his fans are just stupid, man. <laughs> and, like, I hate to say that about people that I don't know. Uh, or, you know, as long as they're not a YouTuber, you know, I say whatever I want about a YouTuber. But, you know, you just, you just got to be really fucking dumb to, like, be a part of the whatnot bid auction. The damn thing, like, lasts, like, 30 seconds, right? If you're lucky. Some of them are, like, 15, 20 seconds. And you're so frantic to buy something from Chase because you love him so much that you're willing to pay, like, 30 or 40 more dollars than you should. And there's, like, uh, there's, like, a thousand people or several hundred people watching this fucking auction, man. And he'll put up something like, here's a limited edition piece of my dookie. Everybody's going to want that, obviously. So... You know, you'll end up paying way more than you should. And he's counting on it, too. You guys are fucking fools. Like, he's counting on you to be that stupid. He didn't even talk about this in the video, but I saw him walking around with it. The Super Scope 6. You know, that's that's a good that's a good piece right there. So, yeah, he had to he had to take care of that. And there's his, here's his caretaker, the Sky Guy. Which, by the way, people have sent me recommendations for his even newer thing that he's doing now. Past the convention videos. He's like rebooting his $10 game collection, but it's not even really a reboot because, um, and a lot of people are complaining about this in his comments too, but he does the intro for the video. So far they have two videos out about the $10 game collection. He does the like 20 second intro and then like, he's not really in the rest of either of those two videos. It's all sky guy and the other fuckers. And, um, and they're going around to yard sales and stuff. You know, they're starting with 10 bucks and blah, blah, blah. But then, like, they immediately call this guy that they know. So, like, using their connections and stuff. They're like, hey, I just bought these two shitty sports games. Would you buy them? How much would you give us? And, like, I'll give you 20 bucks. So then they, like, double their money from 10 to 20. And they kind of snowball from there. But people have a huge problem with that because it's not really a $10 game collection if you're fucking cheating like that. And then they go in their comments. Uh, like, Chase at the right price, you know, his channel or whatever. They go in the comments and they're like... It's okay for us to use our connections because that's what you should do. Like, dude, anybody that starts with a $10 game collection, most of the time they're not going to have fucking connections. If they did, they'd have more than $10 to start with. I don't know, man. Shit's ridiculous, dude. I fucking hate this guy. We got Mario Tennis Ultra Smash here. We'll keep going through the... Okay, so yeah, I didn't I didn't do like a play-by-play -play for the Mario video, but at the end of it, he was able to secure 60 Mario games. So he took 60 Mario games from that convention. Like, what the fuck, man? I don't know what the 87's for. Maybe he saw 87, but he chose to only take 60. If that's the case, then you can't say that he didn't fucking hurt the damn community right there. Because that would be peanut butter ass with celery sticking out. Then we got Sky Guy. Sky Guy got the high, uh, the arcade game, TMNT 2. Mega Man 5. Banger. 
yeah, Mickey Mania, Donkey Kong Country 2. I think he ended up giving this away, but only uh, on his whatnot. So you have to you have to buy something to enter that. So it's not really a giveaway unless you fucking give him money because he's not doing anything for free. You ain't getting shit from Chase for nothing. Like, you're going to have to do something. We got a loose cart of Contra here for the NES. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, not, it's not like he's buying, like, barbecue, backyard, burger, uh, fucking football for the Wii or something. I don't know what it's called. Backyard football for the Wii. He's buying shit that people would want. Like Mario RPG. Why would you want to pay that? $85 for Mario RPG? Even Chase don't pay that. But you're going to pay it. More than likely. You're going to pay more for it if you buy it from him. $25 for Mario World. Uh, I think he ended up paying $15 for that. So, yeah. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, and keep in mind, you can fucking get the remake of this game on the Switch for probably half that price. Like, for, you could probably get it used for $40. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. God, they look so fucking weird. So fucking weird. It's just like, got the backpacks on. Like, you're going fucking camping in a damn indoors. You're going camping indoors. I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like, wouldn't it make more sense to just have, like, a cart or something? Or, like, a suitcase with you uh, that you could have on wheels? You know, that way you're not just walking around looking like fucking eight-year-old waiting at the bus stop like a little bitch. We got Zelda. You know, you gotta have Zelda. Oh, what a beautiful man. Holy God, dude. Don't you just want to fucking hook him up with a girl? Nope. <laughs> I'd rather go out with this dude. <laughs> Shit, or maybe this dude. Even, even when he's blurry, he looks better than this motherfucker over here. Ugh. Uh, I'm not going to look at that for much longer. But, yeah, he got Rampage for the NES. Um, there was, like, one more picture, I thought, right? Yeah, 31. Here we go. I don't know why it didn't fucking automatically go. Windows 11. Oh, yeah, he got Earthbound. He got it for 375 Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, just think about it. So, all of that, all of that that you just saw in this fucking video was from the same convention. From just one dude. Just one dude. You know, because, like, yeah, Sky helped him, but, like, that's still all his money. It's all Chase's money, you know? And then I think uh, Phoenix put out a video where he said he spent 4000 at this convention. And Retro Rick hasn't put his video out yet because he's so slow. Uh, plus, I think he got hacked again, which, you know, that part sucks for sure. But, uh, yeah, just think about that, man. That's the kind of damage. There is literally, like, if you're if you're a gamer and you got a game convention near you, just fucking stay home. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't support shit like that. If they're going to let people come in there, early access, cherry pick, work the fucking vendors and stuff, how is that fair to you as a customer? It's not. And and then there's so many people that watch this shit and they just love it. You know, he's tricking them. He's like, Pokemon hunting at a massive game collection. I'll tell you right now. This Pokemon hunting at a massive game collection or convention. I can't speak. Sorry. There's like two segments about Pokemon in that whole video. The rest is him, you know, you saw the screenshots, buying all that other garbage. So it really doesn't even have anything to do with Pokemon, but he's using Pokemon for the clickbait. I mean, if you look there, 92,000 views, 93, like these four videos, and a lot of them have the same scenes mixed in of them like walking around and shit. Dude's getting like thousands and thousands of dollars right here just from people watching these videos. Not including when they come and buy all of the dweeb shit on Whatnot. Or the strangers that buy on Amazon. I'm, I'm sure he probably does the Whatnot stuff first. Because there's a chance that you would pay more for it than what it's listed for. You know, if you like gotta have it, you know, and like have to outbid somebody. But I digress, man. That's the end of the video. Long-winded. I know. But I just, it's important to get this kind of stuff out there, man. It's not always about just, oh shit, they're bad, they buy it low, rip people off and sell it high. It's about damaging, at the core, this whole fucking hobby. <laughs>